Hey there, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar. We are so excited to get started. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and drop a link in the chat. Please click this link so that you can use graphical analysis alongside us. Um, there will be a, a code that lets you use graphical analysis during this webinar and I think for another month or two. I believe it's through April. So um, let me just copy that really quickly and pop that in the chat. We will be taking questions today, so please make sure you have that chat box open. Um, I'm going to have an eye on those chats and I'll be um, asking Fran, you know, your questions throughout the, the webinar. So if you have any questions about anything we're saying, pop them in there and we'll try to get those answered. If we happen to miss it, we will reach out and get you an answer. And while we're waiting for a few more folks to come into the Zoom room, uh, go ahead and navigate to that chat box and let me know if this is your first webinar with us, if you've joined us before. Just make sure that that chat box is set to everyone so we can see, so, so everyone can see your chats. Um, that'll be especially helpful when we're answering questions so that people know what questions have been asked and what's coming up. So head on down. Oh, perfect. Nice. So we have a few returning folks. We have somebody here for the first time. That's awesome. Thank you all so much for joining us. Very cool. All right. Yeah, a really good mix. That's awesome to see. And just because we have a few newcomers in here, um, as everyone's settling in, I'm going to pop a link into the chat. If you click that link, you'll be able to follow along in graphical analysis. So Go ahead and click that um, and we'll get started. All right, can we pull up the presentation? Uh, well, just a little introductions first. So you've been listening to Dylan and Dylan is part of our marketing team here at Vernier and she does an awesome job. Uh, and I'm Fran, I'm the director of physics here at Vernier and I often answer questions from customers. Uh, I also answer tech support. Um, I help people figure out what to buy, and I do a lot of other things, including teaching workshops and doing webinars. Uh, so let's see, let's get that presentation up. Uh, so we're, you're here for Physics Essentials. Uh, physics Essentials is basically, you know, what do you need to get started? So here we go. Um, couple housekeeping items. Uh, we will have a recording available uh, in about three to five business days. Uh, usually gets a little bit of light editing, uh, but you'll receive an email with the recording link, uh, and then there'll be a link to a folder with additional resources and certificate of attendance. Uh, and again, make sure that you put your questions in the chat, um, and Dylan will alert me if there's anything important that I need to answer along the way. Uh, and if we don't answer, uh, you can email us at physics at vernier.com or support at vernier.com, or you can call us directly, uh, our phone number's on our website, or you can use the chat on our website. So the big question, what do I need to outfit my physics classroom? Uh, and I'm going to start with what I think is probably the most fundamental thing is you need carts and tracks. Uh, so what we recommend um, is the Dynamics Cart and Track System with GoDirect sensor carts. Uh, it comes with everything you see in the picture. Uh, the alternative, uh, if you already have um, you already have carts and tracks, then you can uh, go with motion detectors, force sensors. Uh, if you don't have any carts and tracks, we do have a less expensive Dynamics cart and track system that doesn't have any, um, any sensor carts. It's just got plain carts. Uh, but if you go that way, it's a little bit more expensive um, to get the basics. So just, just so you know. So I'm now going to switch so you can see what's going on here. Let's see. There we are. Uh, so I've got graphical analysis up, and I have my track here, and I have some carts. Uh, they come in these two colors, which on your screen, I don't know how they show to you, but we call this one yellow, and we call this one green. Uh, the technical colors are teal and chartreuse, um, and many people have told us that this one is blue and this one is green, so we apologize. Uh, but each of these carts uh, has uh, 
a fifth wheel on the bottom. Uh, and this fifth wheel, you probably, I don't know if you can actually see it there. It's got like little, I don't think you can see it. It's got little stripes on it and there's a light that shines on it. And it's basically reading as the stripes go by. Uh, and then it's also got at the end here, a place where you can attach accessories like uh, a hook or a bumper. Um, and that is where the force sensor attachment is. Uh, so it comes, let me just grab a little hook here. Uh, here's the hook and you just put that in there and now you can measure pushes and pulls on this cart um, or you can use it as a force sensor for other experiments. Uh, and then there's also an embedded three axis accelerometer in here. Uh, there's a little uh, set of axes here and a little set of axes here. And if you kind of go over here to the edge and go down as deep as this, um, then that's where that accelerometer chip is. So a little bit tricky to actually locate it, but it's in there. Some, some people like to do an experiment where they put this on uh, like some rotating platform and do it a couple different ways and figure out where inside here the chip has to be. Uh, and then it's also got a plunger. Uh, so this plunger will let it push away from something. So like that, oops, I didn't have it quite set, right? Oh, much better. Uh, so plunger, it's got little tabs and these tabs, we've got some Velcro on one side, which you, hard to see black on black here, but it's Velcro. And then it's got, some of them have a magnet inside. I don't know if you can see, kind of catches the light a little bit there. Uh, and then some of them are plain because there's nothing in there, but you can put the Velcro on there. Uh, and so these can be used for doing collisions. If you've got Velcro on two of them, you can do inelastic collisions where the two carts hit each other and stick. Um, or if you put magnets in them, you can do some nice, very nice elastic collisions. Uh, we even have some magnets that you can get where you can put the magnets on the force sensors and do an, an elastic collision like that. And then you saw a whole bunch of stuff that came in the package uh, that you saw laid out in the, in the photo that I showed you. So it also includes these little hoop springs uh, and there's one that's sort of mushier and one that's not as mushy. Uh, and you can use those to do some lovely force and impulse, uh, impulse and momentum. So in fact, why don't we do some impulse and momentum? So I'm gonna go ahead and start a new experiment in graphical analysis. It's gonna be sensor data collection. But first I'm gonna turn on, oops, I'm gonna turn that on so the little red light is blinking there. Um, and then when I hit sensor data collection, it's going to come up and give me a list of all the sensors in the room. Now, uh, we've got, well, not that many in this room, actually. In the building, we've got a lot of them. So depending on where you are, you might see a whole long list uh, right in here. Uh, but this is just one that we have right here. I'm going to choose connect. Oops, did I wait too long? Oh, let me try again. There we are. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and in addition to the position uh, channel, I'm also gonna activate the force channel. Uh, so we're gonna have two sensor channels here. And it automatically gives me three graphs, a force graph, a position graph, and a velocity graph. And I can do however many graphs that I want. So uh, let's see if I can, I can't really see it up here. Where is the, how do I hide this thing? There we are. Uh, there, now I can see it. Um, so I can go up to here where my view options and I can change how many graphs if I want to. I can include a data table, meters. Uh, and if I were to, if I wanted to give this um, uh, experiment to some students who were homebound, then I can uh, do that as well if I add some videos. Uh, so let's see, I have some questions here. So let me let me answer some questions and then we'll actually collect some data. 
Yes, so we have one question. Um, does the Go track only work with graphical analysis and not Logger Pro? Uh, so the Go Direct sensor carts uh, do work only with graphical analysis, LabQuest 2, and LabQuest 3. And if you don't have any LabQuest, you can't buy a LabQuest 2 anymore, so you could only get LabQuest 3 for that. But yes. Awesome. And then one more. Is the cart colliding with a track bumper? Uh, yes. If I move this a little bit, now you can actually see the bumper. At least you should be able to see the bumper. Looks good to me. All right. And that's so, it for questions for now. All righty. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple things. I'm going to move my cart sort of towards the end here, and I'm going to, oops, I'm going to zero the position of the cart. So it's starting at a zero position, and I'm going to zero the force on the cart because I don't have anything pushing on the cart right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit the collect button. And that's how easy it is to collect data. Now, if you have got graphical analysis pulled up on your device, then I can share this data to you. So what you would do um, is you would on your device, and I have a, um, I have a device here. So here I have my iPad. And what I would do is I would click on data sharing or tap on data sharing. And now I have to enter the source ID. And on my data sharing session, it is IWR number two MS. And when I hit connect, then all of that data actually appears right there. This is the exact same data that I just collected on a completely different device and literally connected to a different uh, Wi-Fi network. So you can share this over the internet to everybody. And if you can do that, uh, you can go ahead and get that. I'm going to um, see, I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to put that in the chat. and then put that back up briefly. So that's what you need to put into your data sharing code. I'm gonna go back and show you a couple of features of graphical analysis, which is another thing that is absolutely recommended for uh, starting out with putting together physics equipment. Uh, you can get a free version uh, which has all the features that you see here that I've already done, except the data sharing. The data sharing only is in the pro version, which is a subscription. Um, great for teaching hybrid classes, or if you have students who they're, they're collected on one device, you can instantly give all of the students the data within their group. Um, very nice that way. You can zoom in to see all of the data, get it, let it fill up the entire space. Uh, you can get a nice slope by applying a curve fit and the default is linear. Uh, you can then move this around if it's covering things up. You can go ahead and get an integral. That box can also be moved around. Um, you can put in an annotation. So if I say, all right, during this part here, oops, let me just go back and get a little there. We're doing this part here, uh, graph options, annotation, cart collides and turns around. And that annotation is connected there. So lots of benefits of using graphical analysis uh, and very simple, very quick. Your students can basically start using it almost immediately. Uh, they just click around on stuff and find things. All right, so 
cart and track system also comes with mass. So we can change the momentum of this cart by adding mass to it, uh, up to four pieces. Uh, this setup comes with uh, this little device, which is something that you would connect to the side. It connects to the little uh, stand and we can put the whole thing at an angle. Uh, like so. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna take that off though because that makes it awkward for me. Uh, it comes with this great thing, which is a pulley. Uh, I can take this piece off the end and put this piece on the end, making a mess. Slide that on. You didn't realize you were signing up for comedy hour here, but surprise. So you can have that set up and either putting the string around the hook on the cart or uh, there's actually a little, it's really hard to see. There's like a little hole there. You can also tie the string there and have the string go over the pulley. The pulley has to be over the edge of the table, of course, and do Newton's second law that way with some hanging mass. Um, everything here is on stuff that is on, uh, when you click on the link that you'll get it uh, afterwards, there's a shopping list in the folder and all these things are on that shopping list. All right, any questions about carts and tracks? Oh, uh, can you show how you set up the data sharing? Yes. Um, so it's up here, this little uh, data sharing little, uh, I guess some people call it a TIE fighter. Uh, and you get this data sharing status, and then you can make it big like that. This only works with Graphical Analysis Pro. Uh, so if you are uh, using the, the free version, uh, then you won't be able to do that. Any other cart and track questions? Dylan? I'm not seeing anything in the chat, so I think we're good. All right, because I'm going to go on. Uh, let's see, how do I We get... just got one more. Uh, uh -oh. Is it possible to obtain the distance mark tape for old tracks that lack it? Ah, so I think you're talking about this thing along. Oops, I'm, not, I'm no longer on the that screen. Let me go back to that screen. All right, I think you're talking about this strip. Um, we may be able to get those for you, but you definitely want to email us or call us about that. All right, go back to this. More essential equipment. We want to measure motion. Uh, I don't know how many of you are teachers and how many of you are administrators, uh, but if you're an administrator, your physics teachers definitely want to measure motion. Uh, that is a big, important topic that they definitely want to cover. And in addition to carts and tracks, two additional tools for studying motion are the motion detector and the photogate. Uh, so these function two different ways. Um, the motion detector is specifically using ultrasound and detecting position. And then software looks at how those positions change over time to get velocity and acceleration. Uh, where there's the photogate is simply looking at something passing through two beams of infrared light uh, that, you know, as the object passes through, it blocks those beams of light, and that is how the computer gets information. Um, and why would you use these? There are a ton of experiments that use both of these items. So for the motion detector, one of our most popular experiments is motion match where students walk towards and away from the motion detector. Uh, there's ball toss, where they set the motion detector down on the floor or on the table facing upward. Uh, usually we recommend putting something like um, a wire inbox, like you might use in an office, over it to protect it. And then they have a basketball or a volleyball or something where you can toss it up in the air and have it come down. Uh, and you see that for acceleration of gravity. You can also, using graphical analysis and calculated columns, use that to look at potential and kinetic energy. 
Uh, you can use it for carts on tracks if you don't have the sensor carts. If you have any cart on any track, you can use these. Uh, look at constant acceleration, conservation of momentum, conservation of energy. Um, and then another big favorite is to look at air drag with falling coffee filters. And then the photo gate uh, that also has a whole bunch of different experiments you can do. So acceleration of gravity, Newton's second law, Atwood's machine, pendulum periods, conservation momentum, projectile motion, car races, etc. They also use the photo gates in uh, Science Olympiad. Uh, where they use it for, I believe they use it for the Scrambler event where they have uh, some sort of, I think it's a gravity powered car. I'm not sure what it's powered by actually. It's been a while since I've seen that event. Uh, so let me uh, go back to this and I've got, I'm going to go ahead and do a new, well, actually I'm going to, I'm going to disconnect my cart sensor and say done, and then do a new experiment. And now I'm gonna say, all right, sensor data collection again. And this time I'm gonna to connect to my photo gate. And there's my photo gate. If you've got a whole lot of uh, sensors that are on, like you've got a whole classroom full of students that all have a photo gate, they can actually look at the little ID number here, it's harder for us to see it uh, if we're old and need reading glasses and maybe you don't have the right reading glasses right at the moment because you haven't bothered to go and get some. Uh, not that I'm speaking about myself or anything, but you can put in the last couple digits or characters and it will filter that out uh, to directly just the uh, ones that you're looking for, connect, um, and now I have the photo gate connected. Uh, I think I got some questions, Dylan. Yes, um, we were wondering, are we able to mix and match the GoDirect equipment and older wired equipment, um, the LabQuest 2, for example? Yes, uh, so if you have LabQuest 2, you can certainly plug in your wired equipment and connect via USB with the GoDirect. Um, GoDirect just means goes, it goes directly to your device. So there's, it doesn't need an extra interface um, and it can go directly either by USB or by Bluetooth. And so far we've been using Bluetooth, but you can also do it with USB. I have a USB cable somewhere, there it is. Um, so that would be taking this and instead of connecting via Bluetooth, I would just, Plug one end into here, and then I'd plug the other end into my computer, which I'm not going to do right now um, because I've already got it connected via Bluetooth, as you can tell, because a little green blinking light on here. Uh, but there it is. Other questions? Can one GoDirect sensor connect to multiple devices? Uh, no, not, not at the same time. Uh, so like your Bluetooth headset, okay, you don't want it listening to your computer and your phone and your tablet at the same time, right? So it's only going to listen to one of those three things. Uh, and similarly, you can't have like you and your, like you couldn't, the devices outputting the Bluetooth can only connect to one thing. The thing that is connecting, that it's connecting to can connect to multiples. So like on your iPad, you can connect multiple Bluetooth items. Like you can be using your Bluetooth headset and your GoDirect sensor. And maybe you've also got a wireless Bluetooth keyboard. You can have multiple things connected but each of those things is only gonna to connect to the one iPad at a time. 
Awesome. And then just a few more questions. Um, can the GoDirect photo gates be daisy chained like the old photo gates? They can, uh, and they require a special cable. So you can't use the old daisy chaining cable, but they have this connector. It's still an RJ11, but the tab for the RJ11 is not in the middle. It's on the side. So you need a special cable uh, and we do sell those. Awesome. And last question, will the LabQuest 2 communicate with graphical analysis for data output? Yes. Uh, so let's see. The easiest way is if you're using a computer or Chromebook to connect the LabQuest 2 via the USB cable directly to your device. Uh, however, the other way to do it is by, uh, you can, Let's see, can you do data sharing with it? I don't remember. Oh, yes, you can do data sharing with it. So there's a data share on the LabQuest 2. It has to be connected to the same network, the same Wi Fi network. And then you get both a QR code on the LabQuest 2 and a little uh, IP address. And you can enter, you can either enter the IP address or use the, the camera on the, your tablet or phone and get the device, get the data into a uh, graphical analysis that way. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so a little bit more about this photo gate. It's got a ton of what we call channels. So it can measure the object velocity. That is the default. It can measure just one of the two gates at a time. It's actually got two different gates. Or you can set it to measure using the laser gate, where you would shine a laser into this little hole and use that as the photo gate, which is great for mousetrap car races, student races, um, uh, good for doing uh, uh, hang time where students will jump. And as they jump, they break the beam and then they come back down. Uh, so lots of things that you can do with that. I'm just going to do a real quick uh, picket fence free fall, because that is the typical thing. So put that here, put this in here so that I'm setting it up so that it's gonna go from one to two, because there's two photo gates in here. Uh, and then let's, I'm gonna leave it on object velocity. I'm gonna say done and I'm actually gonna go ahead and put a meter up here as well. So the meter will just say what the most recent uh, velocity was. If I've got something going backwards through the photo gate, it gives me negative. If I go in the positive direction, it gives me positive. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and collect data and drop that through. And now I wanna to zoom to all the data. There's my velocity versus time graph because we're measuring velocity. And uh, let's see what the slope turns out to be. 9.79 meters per second per second. Ah, oh, isn't it great when experiment just works? That's how I feel about this. It's like, oh, it's so nice. So that is our photo gate. Um, Let's see, where am I on time? Because I've got a bunch more stuff to do here. Ooh, I've only got like half an hour and a little bit left. All right, so I'm gonna not do the motion detector, uh, but I am going to move on to, oops, other direction. So other essential uh, things, uh, we've got your meter stick and we've got your hanging masses. Uh, this is stuff that's actually pretty new for us to be selling these, uh, be, but we are working on making it so that you can do the majority of your physics classroom lab shopping uh, right here with us. And so we know that meter sticks and hanging masses are essential equipment. Uh, we picked a meter stick that is hardwood, so it's pretty straight uh, and it is got centimeter and millimeter markings on both sides. I was a high school physics teacher for 20 years and I would always have students who would measure on with inches because the one side of the meter stick would have inches. <laughs> so this, this will just 
delete that problem entirely. Uh, and the hanging mass, which of course is essential for many experiments as well, just a few are listed here. And we want to measure force as well. Uh, and the force sensor includes, uh, actually it's got 11 channels in it, or 11 channels, nine channels. It's got, oh, this one's only seven channels, sorry. It's a go direct acceleration, which is not essential. It's a, not, it's a lovely sensor, but it's not essential um, that has 11 channels. But this one has seven channels. So just like the, um, the photo gate, you can see a lot of them. Let me just, uh, pull this out here just a sec. All right, so I finished putting the screw on here. This is our go direct force and acceleration. Uh, this is an older model. It's got a slightly different color label on it, uh, but it's got the hook there. Let me go ahead and connect that to graphical analysis so that you can see the channels on it. Um, disconnect this, done. New experiment, don't save. Sensor data collection. And let's see. Looks like this one wants to be connected via the USB cable. So we will do that. All right, so it automatically shows up if I've connected via USB. Uh, and here are my channels. I've got three different axes of acceleration and I've got three different axes of gyroscope as well as the force channel. Uh, so things that you can do with this. Uh, if you had it already charged up, which obviously I did not have, uh, you can use this wirelessly, put a string on it. I like to wrap like, I don't know, a couple layers of old t-shirt around it and then you can swing it in a circle. Uh, and then when you swing it in a circle, then you can get the, um, the x-axis is this direction. So you can get the x-axis acceleration. Uh, the, you can get the rotational velocity and you can get the amount of force and you can very nicely uh, get a mathematical model describing circular motion. Um, you can also do things like friction experiments by pulling something with this along a surface, along a variety of surfaces. Uh, you can use this to um, compare the mass of something and its weight. This will give you weight in Newtons uh, and you put on a uh, balance and get the mass in kilograms, compare those values, should have a familiar ratio. Uh, so you could use this for Newton's laws. It's excellent for, uh, I like to put a rubber band between one force sensor and another force sensor and look at Newton's third law by pulling them apart. Um, so plenty of ways to use this, uh, like it a lot, another essential piece of equipment. Uh, I'm just going to click done here, hit collect, Get just a little bit of data here. Another fun thing you can do with it is you can actually, if you're connected wirelessly, hang the thing from a spring and let it do some simple harmonic motion uh, and get the force and acceleration at the same time. So nice, nice little piece of equipment here. Now, moving on, we don't study only mechanics in high school or college introductory physics, we also study um, electricity. And so for electricity, we've got some voltage and current sensors. Uh, the voltage sensor is has got two ranges, um, 20 volts. It's not plus or minus 20 volts. It's like you can get a range of 20 volts. So you can be like between zero and 20, or you can be like between negative five and positive 15. Um, and then a one voltage uh, differential, which is actually negative one volt to positive one volt. Uh, and then a current sensor with two ranges, plus or minus one amp and plus or minus a tenth of an amp or 100 milliamps. Essential for Ohm's law, circuits, batteries and bulbs, capacitance, induction, uh, anything like that. So those go excellently with 
our circuit board. Uh, it's called the circuit board too because it's the sort of the second model of this. Uh, the first one was a little simpler, and so we did an upgrade some years ago to give it a few more features. Um, but you can, it, it already has on it resistors, capacitors, switches, a buzzer, uh, an inductor, light, it comes with light bulbs, it comes with alligator clip wires, uh, and you can use it for a power supply with batteries, a lab quest power supply if you have those, your own power supply. It's got a place for an optional breadboard and an auto resetting fuse. So let's take a look at this. Um, so here is my circuit board. Uh, here are where you put your batteries. Here, if you're using an external power supply, you can connect here. Uh, here's where you'd connect your uh, LabQuest power supply. And this switch will switch you between using those different uh, sources of power. Uh, if you have the old ones, a mix of old ones and new ones, all of the pin numbers are the same. So if you're trying to connect a circuit using the pin numbers, you can still do that. Uh, here's your sockets for light bulbs. There is a momentary switch here. Here's your potentiometer, uh, buzzer, a uh, couple capacitors, uh, inductor. It comes with an iron core. I'm not sure why that one isn't here right now. Uh, and then this is where you'd put the optional breadboard uh, if you wanted to do some elect additional electronics instruction. But again, not essential. This, the rest of it, I do consider to be essential. Your voltage sensors uh, and your current sensors all have alligator clips and collect nicely to the little pins on the circuit board if you need to put more than one, that works too. Just put that a little bit lower and then this one can go a little bit higher. Remember to always connect your current sensor in series and your voltage sensor in parallel. If you're an administrator, don't worry about that. Physics teachers know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, and here's our resettable fuse over here. If too much power goes through or too, too much uh, current goes through, uh, that will blow and will protect the elements on the circuit board. Uh, and then, you know, let it cool down, you know, disconnect everything, and that's, that will reset its, itself because it's thermal-based, and you'll be fine to, to do experiments again. All right. Brief, any additional questions at this point? Because we've talked about a lot of stuff. No questions so far, but I'll give folks a, a second or two to type if they're working on typing out a question. Um, one of our listeners uh, mentioned something very interesting, which is that the posts on the board are crowned, which makes it easy to connect multiple alligator clips. Yeah, so that's what I was showing here. It's probably really hard for you to actually see it with this camera here, but I can connect so, sort of on the bottom of the thing, and then I can also connect to the top of it because of the shape of the pins. So, and those are secure connections uh, on those. And we have one question. Um, does the current meter have a resettable fuse? I believe so. Um, I would have to double check on that, but I believe it does. All right. I think those are all the questions we have so far. All right. So moving on, what software do I need? All right. Well, we've already talked some about this. Okay. So we've already talked about graphical analysis and you saw how quickly I was able to set up graphical analysis with the sensor cart. Um, just connect it up, find your cart, select your channels, you'll get to the graphs, uh, hit collect, and immediately start collecting data. Uh, you can do curve fits, uh, you can do calculated columns to linearize data for those of you who do modeling instruction, uh, and you can use it on any device, computer, tablet, Chromebook, or phone. Um, and then if you're using the pro version, you also get to do the real-time data sharing over the internet, as I demonstrated. Uh, you get 
the fast Fourier transform and histogram functions. Uh, again, administrators, you don't have to know what that is. Uh, your, uh, your physics teachers definitely do know that you want to use the FFT if you're studying sound and you want to determine what the dominant frequency is and what any harmonics are that are present. Um, custom curve fits and custom calculated columns. So what that means is instead of using our uh, our particular equations that are already given, you can write your own or modify ones that are given. So for example, if you wanted to model uh, mathematically some damped harmonic motion, you can actually combine as a custom curve fit um, the sine function for your harmonic motion and the exponential function uh, for the, uh, de the, the damping effect. So, and similarly, you can do custom calculated columns. Uh, some, some students find the mathematical expressions we use for our calculated columns formula a little bit challenging. Uh, and with custom calculated columns, uh, some students find that a little easier because they can mimic the expressions that they already know from their class. Um, there's also an experiment library, very useful for homebound students or for having them do makeup labs. They consist of a number of experiments from our lab books. There's actually some can, can included from biology and chemistry as well as physics, uh, but those are available. They tend to have a little bit of video. They have pre-collected data, but there's no analysis done on them. So the students would have to perform the analysis and come to conclusions. Uh, and then finally, the pro version also has the error bars and annotations. Uh, it looks like we're getting some more questions up there, Dylan. Can you tell me some of them? Absolutely. Uh, first question, do most of the GoDirect sensors need to be charged before each use? If not, how long does a charge typically last? Great question. So when we gave the engineers our specifications, we told them that we wanted them to last a tip for the entire typical school day. And for the entire typical school day, if you had six or seven classes all using the sensor. So, you know, different sensors are used for different amounts of time. Um, a motion detector might be used for a series of five second data collections. Uh, similarly, a force sensor might be used for a series of five second data collections. Uh, your current voltage, uh, if you're doing something with capacitors, you could be going at a fraction of that, or you could be going at, you know, a minute or two. Uh, so we designed them with that in mind. So you should only have to charge them overnight in between classes, in between class days. So you don't have to charge it, you know, if you use them first period, you don't have to charge them again before second period. Awesome. Uh, one more question. Will a lab quest three connect to a Chromebook? Yes. And that will connect uh, directly with the USB cable. Um, we also have some cables that go that are USB C instead of regular USB A. Uh, so we do we do have those in there. Uh, and then you can also, as I mentioned before, you can do the data sharing. Awesome. And um, one more. Is there a community with teacher made lab documents specifically for Vernier equipment? Ooh, not that we host. Uh, however, there are a number of physics teacher communities where people do share that kind of thing. So uh, there are a couple of physics teacher groups on Facebook that I'm aware of. There's the Pretty Good Physics Google group. Um, there's the AP Physics community uh, on, the, on the College Board site. And if you ask around in those places, a lot of people already have lessons created that use our sensors. Um, so yeah, you can find those, We don't, but we don't have it hosted ourselves. Amazing, and one more actually. Uh, do our charging stations work with every sensor? Yes, so the charging stations uh, are the ones that are meant for GoDirect sensors in general. 
They have slots for our wand-based sensors. So if you imagine our temperature probes or our pH probes or our magnetic field sensors, they slot right into um, some holes, but they also have a bunch of US, just regular USB sockets right along the top. Uh, I think there's eight sockets. Since we don't use that many wand type sensors in physics, uh, you might just get some um, anchor charger, like where you can plug in five or whatever USB cables at once uh, and use those for charging. Uh, it's really up to you. All right, those are all, all of our questions. All right, so next big software, uh, you come over here, is recommended. I wouldn't say it's essential. Some people might call it essential, um, but the recommended uh, is Vernier Video Analysis. So this is a paid software only. It's, there's no free version, but it does let you study 2D motion simply and easily works in the browser uh, on any device. Um, so you can use it again, computer, Chromebook, tablet, phone, uh, includes nine ready to use sample videos, includes some of the calculation features of Graphical Analysis Pro. So it includes those custom curve fits and includes custom calculated columns. Uh, so those are, you know, if, if there's, if there's a calculation thing that you can do in Graphical Analysis Pro, you can probably also do it in Vernier Video Analysis. So let me pull that up. Let's see, how do I get out of this? There we are. So this is, I'm just right in the uh, browser and I typed in videoanalysis.app. And Dylan, do you have that link that other people can use? Just dropped it in the chat. All right, so that has a code that'll let you use this for a couple months, maybe, um, till April, wasn't it? Yes, April Something 25th. Like that. All right, so when you open video analysis on your browser, uh, then you've got, here are the, the sample videos that you can try. Uh, and so we've got basketball shot, Fan card is just linear horizontal acceleration. Ball drop, which is vertical linear acceleration. We got something going around on a turntable. Uh, we've got this lovely video of co falling coffee filters. Um, we've got a ball rolling horizontally and then coming off a table. And then we've got a couple different colliding carts and a pool ball bounce. Some of these experiments are used in a couple of our books. Uh, but they can also be done independently. So for example, if I were to pull out the turntable one, first you got to download it and then play. So here it is. We can code, make the video go forward step-by-step step or back. We can play the entire video. We can also, uh, make sure that we're advancing, you know, however many frames we want to at a time. We can set the video frame rate if we need to override that. Uh, and this is, you know, traditional video analysis. You would go and put a dot at, you know, some point on your object to be marked every frame. That feels like it's gonna be a little bit tedious, to be honest with this one. Um, I'm gonna, click here on tracking. This gives me a new little target here, and I'm gonna auto track this. Now I don't have to do the tedious part. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it there because I've already gone through one revolution. Uh, you can do the same things that you would do with, uh, if you have ever used video analysis in Logger Pro where you need to set a scale. Let's see, 
from 25 to 75, I think that's half a meter. I'm gonna put that up there. Uh, now that automatically changes my units uh, from uh, pixels to meters. That also translates into my data set. Uh, I can set the origin of my system in the center here. And I have the option of going to polar coordinates, uh, which is going to introduce an R column and a theta column, as well as velocity columns for each of those. So then we can do some interesting graphs here where we graph theta velocity. And let's see, I'm going to select some of this and zoom to that part. Ooh, wow. I'm gonna now edit my graph options so that my bottom scale is at zero and my top scale is at three. Did that work? I didn't like that. What is it? Oh, because it needs to be more than that. Data velocity, radians per second. Cut huh. this negative, that's why, ha gonna change my graph options here from negative three to zero. All right, you can see it's more or less uh, pretty uh, constant there at about negative 1.9 radians per second. Uh, typically, if you're doing something like this, you'll get better results if you put on all of the dots yourself, but as I mentioned, it is a little bit tedious. All right, I see there are some questions. Yes, can we share a video analysis experiment? Yes, so can we data share in video not, analysis? Not with video analysis, but you can easily save the file and give the file to somebody else. Uh, so up here, you would just choose save, or save as, save that file, and then, you know, depending on whether you need to email it to someone or drop it into a uh, chat, or if you're on uh, iPhones and iPads, you can airdrop, uh, or you can save it to a Google file, Google Drive, or Dropbox, anything like that. At what level would you suggest using Graphical Analysis Pro? Uh, I would say uh, with sort of regular level physics and above, you, I don't. I wouldn't say you necessarily need it with uh, conceptual level physics. All right, I think those are our outstanding questions. All right, so let's see. We've got about a little less than ten minutes left. Um, let me go back to my uh, lovely set of slides. That's not my set of slides. I just got one more question. Uh -huh. uh, is it possible to open the video data file in graphical analysis? No, I don't believe so. But I'm not sure why you would want to because you have all of the analysis functions in uh, Vernier Video Analysis that you do in Graphical Analysis Pro. All right, last category, what about lab manuals? Um, we do have a bunch. Uh, so starting with uh, some basics here, we have physics with Vernier and sensor cart physics. Uh, these both have many experiments for introductory physics at the basic high school or college level. Uh, they can be used with honors, AP. Um, the sensor cart physics uh, was written by Roger Larson. Uh, he's one of our consultants for Vernier, and this is an inquiry, a guided inquiry based book, uh, and it's an ebook. If you get that, it will include graphical analysis, profiles, and videos, and all kinds of fun features. And in the, the physics with Vernier is more of a step-by-step, uh, -step, uh, great if you're not comfortable using sensors yet. Um, and it has, it, it includes instructions for whatever combination of equipment that you have. So if you have photogates, but not motion detectors, 
you can find instructions that use photo gates. Uh, or if you have motion detectors instead of photo gates, you can find instructions that use motion detectors. Or if you don't have motion detectors or photo gates, but you do have sensor carts, you can find the experiments that use the sensor carts. Um, so there's lots of information. Uh, so both of those are available and you can, in all cases, you get instructions that you can modify. Um, Physics Explorations and Projects. This is a guided inquiry book that's aligned to NGSS standards. Um, it can also be used at multiple levels, depending on how deep or not deep you want to go. And again, you can modify the instructions. And two books that go with the Vernier Video Analysis Program. Uh, so one is on motion and sports, and the other is on conservation laws and forces. Uh, I would not say that motion sports doesn't have any conservation laws and forces, and I wouldn't say that conservation laws and forces doesn't have any motion sports, but when we choose the, the, chose these titles, we didn't really know which labs we were putting in which, so we picked ones that would apply to a lot of different labs. Each one has 12 experiments. They come in a guided version, which are very step-by-step. And an abridged version. So if you like, you have your students do like three where they're given step by step information and they're like, ah, oh, we don't need the step by step information. We know how to use the program already. Then go to the abridged version and it says, all right, it just says collect the data by putting points on, on the relative points of the object uh, and then has them do the analysis. And again, editable instructions. Uh, and also really uh, helpful appendices uh, that I think are really good. Um, all right, we are, we've got five minutes left. I want to tell you, don't forget to go to the Google folder uh, because that includes this whole presentation, it includes a shopping list. Uh, and I'm sure that Dylan is putting the link in chat and I would definitely like uh, any additional questions at this time. All right. Uh, which lab book would you recommend for rotational motion labs? We don't have a lot of written rotational motion labs. Uh, there are a couple in the, I didn't list, I didn't list all the books. I was going for essentials here. So we also have an advanced physics with Vernier mechanics book, and that has a couple of rotational labs in it. Uh, and also there is rotation covered in uh, one of the, maybe both, I think both of the video analysis books has at least one rotation lab in it. Other questions? I can also scroll up and see if there's any that I missed. Let's see. Oh, I see actually a really good question in here that we did not answer. Is Logger Pro going to be phased out eventually? Uh, so we are no longer updating Logger Pro. Um, it is old code. Uh, we cannot uh, port it to be usable on tablets or on Chromebooks. And many, many schools have gone to Chromebooks at this point. Um, so we've decided to rather invest our time in working on graphical analysis because the code base that we're working with for that can be used across platforms and it looks the same on all platforms. So we don't have to like write lots of different instructions depending on what it is. Uh, so we're focusing on that. We're no longer doing any updating or development on Logger Pro. At some point, Windows and Apple, Microsoft and Apple are both gonna come out with new operating systems that are basically gonna break Logger Pro. We don't know when that's gonna happen, but when it does happen, we're not gonna fix it. So it's not so much that we're phasing it out, it's that um, time and modernization and improvements in computing and in security uh, phase it out. Any additional questions? Let's see if I can see any more that we missed. We have 
One more question. Uh -huh. Do site subscriptions to Logger Pro carry over to graphical analysis? They do not. Um, the different software. Uh, also, it turns out, crazy thing, we have to pay our developers. And if it turns out, if we just have a model where you pay once and then you get to use it for eternity afterwards, that's not great for paying developers. <laughs> so we, we had to, to make a compromise and said, okay, we're going to go to the subscription model because that keeps us in business longer and we, that lets us support all of you using our equipment and our software. All right, I think our time's about up. Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, I appreciate that you all came and I hope you got something out of it. And remember, you can always reach out if you have any questions. All right, thanks everyone.